Okay, let's get started because of uh, this session is a short presentation. We only have 25 minutes of time. Um, so today I'm presenting with uh, Christina and Keith. My name is Lauri. Um, we will continue the discussion uh, in a buff after, after this session. We will start at 3.45 and we will have one hour of time uh, over there. So everyone who is interested, feel free to join us there. Uh, hopefully as many of you as possible will, will be there because of, I don't think we have that much time here. Anyway, so let's get started with the uh, topic itself. Um, the presentation that we make today is going to be short. Uh, we will also make a brief update what has happened so far. But if you are interested to hear why uh, in a more broader scope than what we are giving today, uh, the original presentation I gave one year ago in Dublin is still uh, up to date, I guess. Nothing has changed so much during one year. So uh, you can still watch it uh, from, the, uh, from the Dublin event size. So um, what we've realized last year was that uh, first impressions should be taken more seriously than what we do at the moment. Uh, we have a uh, very valuable opportunity uh, that we are not using that well right now to uh, try to convince all of those users trying out Drupal to choose Drupal over our competitors. Many of, many of our CMS competitors actually provide very beautiful get started teams with, uh, with a lot of effort put into uh, uh, making them suit very well that one, one use case. Um, so we want to do something to, to improve this. Uh, so this is what all of the evaluators who, who, who evaluate Drupal over, over our competitors basically all of these different groups. So we have the non-technical evaluators, we have technical evaluators and IT teams who are evaluating Drupal for, for their uh, companies internally maybe. We have some uh, developers and site builders who are evaluating Drupal as uh, something that they should build their code on or maybe as something that they should build their client's website on. And all of them see this as a first thing. And uh, maybe that's not the best way to convince them that we are up to date and that this is uh, something that you should build your, your things on. Uh, so these are the people that we are building something for. Uh, this was something that we put a lot of thought on. Uh, we, we limited out some, some, uh, some, some groups of users and uh, we thought that these are the most important groups of uh, people to convince that Drupal is good. Uh, a brief timeline, what has happened uh, at which point, just to give an idea of what is the history of the initiative, like what has happened so far. So the idea was born in uh, DrupalCon New Orleans 2016, kind of-ish, since the idea has been around for, I guess, 10, 11 years already, that we need default content and that we should put a lot of effort into the, uh, the, the first time user experience. So it's definitely not a new, to uh, new idea. Uh, invented by this team, it's more of a, something that's, that has been around for a long, long, uh, longer than that. But uh, in, in the New Orleans DrupalCon, we got the idea that this is something that we probably should work on now because of uh, that could help us get more, more people involved. Um, so since the New Orleans, in June, we started doing some planning. The planning took quite long, so we were doing planning uh, till February 2017 when we started a uh, designer recruitment. Basically, while we were doing planning, we were just trying to find the meaning of this uh, initiative. It's kind of interesting because of it went back and forth. Like, we had an idea, this is what we want to do, but then we didn't know why. And then we went back to the why. And once we got everything figured out, we managed to, to move forward. Uh, as part of that, uh, that part of this initiative, we merged multiple different initiatives kind of trying to solve the same why question and then it became the out of the box uh, experience initiative because that's initially the answer for why. Uh, we are trying to solve something to make a better out of the box experience for, for people. Um, we decided during the planning that we are going to try to recruit a designer. Uh, I personally think that it was a good idea. We had more than a good number 
uh, more than 10 of applications. All of them were good applications. I was very surprised of the level of the applications because all of them were something that we could actually consider making a uh, design like this. So uh, definitely there, uh, one, of the, one of the big concerns we had one year ago was that how can we find a designer? I don't think that was a big problem and uh, I think it was a good way to get a designer. Uh, design was done in August 2017, so it took us uh, pretty much six months to get the design done. And uh, now what we are working on from that on is uh, to build a style guide and actually start implementing all of, all of these things together. So what we came up with was a scenario where we had uh, this uh, food magazine publisher with uh, different content types. Uh, the most important one was the recipe. And there were different uh, um, ways we were working on that. There was the, the content model part where we defined which content should be there, like the recipe, for example. Um, for example, the ingredient, ingredients, which kind of feel, it goes a taxonomy, it goes a feel, a simple feel. And we work with that with uh, contenta people because they were working uh, for the, um, for the, for creating the full content for they, for they work. And we worked together to came up with something that was also useful in a decoupled environment. And later on, then we started creating the default content that if uh, really, uh, did a lot of work on that. Then there's also the installation profile. It started some time before and we just uh, get around that again. And uh, finally there's a design uh, where Keith is going to explain that. But the most important thing here is that all of, all of these parts can be reusable by other initiatives. So all this work, it's done for everything, everybody that can use it. So, so we just talk about a little bit about the design process. Uh, so the process itself has, has followed a pretty good, uh, a pretty good pattern actually. Um, as Larry said, we took quite a bit of time discussing it over. Um, we started by creating a content model uh, and taking a look at wireframes. And so we took that content model, started playing around with the, that content model against this, uh, this imagined scenario of a food magazine and we produced the wireframes, and it was a good process of the wireframes feeding back into, uh, back into the actual model itself. And alongside that, we were able to start coming up with this brand, the idea of the Amami brand. And um, one of the things that was really exciting early on is pretty much as soon as we started producing a content model, and as soon as we had the wireframes, we also had other initiatives starting to grab hold of the idea and run with it. Uh, we had the Contenta CMS, uh, we heard about that this morning, um, really starting to just play around with this model. And this is really exciting because it means that we can start to see already, that, as, as, as Christine has just said, that this whole idea is reusable. So as soon as we had the wireframes uh, agreed on, we were able to create the designs that were shared amongst the community. And you can take a look at those designs. They're up on drupal.org. And um, also at the moment, work that's currently in progress is that we're creating a living style guide that's based on those designs. So you may have already seen this. Uh, it's been shown around a little bit. Um, already, which is great. So uh, we come up with a front page for the Amami theme, and you can see it here, zoomed out, and it's a, a design that's full of sample content to improve the first time user experience of Drupal. And that's what this is all about, it's just using content, really good content hopefully, uh, to be visually engaging, really use, uh, really use that to actually just draw the user in and uh, captivate them. We want the users to get a really clear understanding of why they should consider Drupal. There's some seats available in the front, so you don't have to stand up in the back. Yeah, so we want the users to really understand why they should consider Drupal. They're gonna potentially be coming to this without a clue about what's going on behind the scenes. They could be coming from other content management systems where it's a completely different approach, completely different world. So if we could just do something that welcomes them on board, then that's a good thing, I think. And uh, we wanna compel them to dig deeper. So, Rather than doing what we do today, we saw the, the, the slide earlier with the, the really friendly welcome screen that we're all so familiar with, um, which has been likened to a, a giant pile of Lego bricks with no instructions. You know, go make what you like and, um, you know, enjoy it. 
Uh, that's exactly what we don't want to be doing. We want to be doing something that shows Drupal through a bit of a different lens. It's Drupal in action. We want to pr pre uh, present a demo of Drupal in action. And the default content types of article and recipe, um, they're given the default content, and that looks great for this in that we can use that to provide an instant reference point. You know, if, if, if a user's come into this, they're seeing that we've got articles, we've got recipes, and that default content is going to be something that's meaningful to them, hopefully draw them in to look at how we're actually using that content throughout the designs. We don't want the user to do any hard work. So the magazine-style content provides the design impact whilst the theme remains lightly designed. So that's been the approach that I've taken for the design work. Uh, the idea is basically that we use the content itself and design heavily around that content. Uh, and, and that we actually insert that into the theme, but the theme itself remains really light. So in fact, if you took all this content out, this would be a theme that hopefully could be reused in a number of ways very easily, um, just some color changes or whatever. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of thinking creatively like that to make this as reusable as possible. And the theme provides scenario-based examples that illustrate Drupal core functionality. So we're using the actual content and the, uh, the presentation of those contents to start getting across the fact that Drupal is far from limited in scope. And the sort of example topics that we can cover through this, this demo, we're not entirely sure yet maybe whether there's going to be a tour aspect to this or how we might portray some of this, but certainly at the top level you can already see that we've got the obvious things like uh, content being promoted, content types uh, being presented, image styles, different image styles, view modes, and of course blocks. Uh, the blocks system in Drupal 8 is, is, is such a big improvement we're able to start exploring how that can be used through the theme. And the recipe page, if we just take a look at the design for the recipe page. So Drupal is great for structured content. Uh, our recipe structure follows what you would expect. So this is following the content model, and as I mentioned, it's already being used by the, uh, the contenter CMS. And in fact, these recipes, the fields that are in the recipes, are being used to really just drive the front end design here. So we've got recipes which are ca categorized and tagged. If you go and take a look at the designs, you'll see that we're, we're playing with that quite creatively in the way that we present the uh, recipes on the landing page. Uh, lead images are used for cards throughout, so we're reusing content nicely there. Uh, for MVP, the ingredients list is planned to be a simple array. Obviously, that's something that we could look at advancing on if we want to extend the scope of our demo, which is the whole point of this. So what's being worked on at the moment? Uh, and who to contact if you want to get involved. So obviously we're, we're keen for people to get involved. If you want to get involved, then come and speak to us. Um, uh, for the style guide, Christina and Mark, uh, who's here at the front, has been uh, really doing a great job of getting that up and running. Uh, so we're going to have a style guide in the theme. Uh, accessibility, Andrew McPherson's been involved in helping us get the, uh, the designs in alignment with what we need for accessibility, which is obviously really important. Uh, content, I've made a start on content. There's uh, quite a bit of work that's already been done, but if you're handy at writing articles or that sort of thing, then by all means come and speak to me, because the more the merrier. Um, site build, Larry's taking care of all the site build and the installation profile work, and uh, we've still got finalization of design to do. So um, there's certain assets that we need to do in the design that need to be really customized for this so that we don't have any kind of licensing issues. And we really want to make it apply specifically to the demo that we're trying to create, that, that, that demo experience. And that is it. Yeah, so that's pretty much uh, what we wanted to tell about our initiative at this point. And we would like to st uh, start with the conversation about the initiative. We have prepared some specific questions that we would like to uh, discuss because of those are uh, important for us to be able to make progress. Um, we will leave some time for the end for open discussion slash ideas if you have some. So uh, let's go with the structured, structured questions first. So one of the big questions for our initiative is that uh, should we make umami based on classy and stable? Uh, so basically, classy and stable will have a massive BC break on 9.0.0, and uh, so everything we make design-wise slash in CSS will be practically useless at that point. Um, and I think the life cycle of the design should be longer than that. I don't know. Can we make it not based on classy slash stable or? Does anyone has any opinions on that? Do you have experience maintaining teams that don't ex extend classy slash table? Uh, any kind of ideas around this topic is, is welcome. How many teamers do we have here today? That's 
We have few. Does any of you have any experience not extending Class C or stable? If you have, raise your hand. Two people. Do you want to tell about your experience? Did you have anything particular that we should take into account when that happened, when, when you tried that? Did you actually use it on production? Or, yeah? Nothing particular happened? It was all fine? It was hard, maybe. Did it, did it take more time to build it, or? So, yeah. Sorry, what's the actual problem? What, what, what's the problem? So the, so the yeah. problem is that... Uh, Repeat the question, please. So the question he asked is, what is the problem that we're trying to solve by proposing that it not extend from Class C and Stable? So the problem is that Class C and Stable are frozen, but the core slash module markup is allowed to be moved. Core markup meaning JavaScript, CSS, everything. And once we go to 9.0.0, it means that Class C and Stable will be deleted, meaning that all of Bardic 7 and umami eventually will be based on the uh, eventually the, the, the markup in modules that has changed, meaning that the CSS and JavaScript will break. So if we uh, built this on class C slash stable, me it means that we don't have to make any changes for the team once we break BC in the modules, but it means that it will break on 9.0.0 and not be compatible anymore. So I, I'm trying to read in this issue where the issue says that we're going to remove Classy and Stable from Drupal 9, and it doesn't say that to me. So could you go into that a little more? Because this was very surprising for me to hear. Oh, so stabi Stable is going to be removed, not Classy. But basically, Classy breaks when Stable gets removed. And it's on the, it should be on the initial proposal of Stable. So the, so the idea would be um, in order to, in order for the theme from the out-of-the-box initiative to not have its own upgrade path. But if, cl if, if Classy's dependencies on stable break, that means that Classy would need to be updated, and this theme, if it were extending Classy, would need to be updated. So, so you're yeah. trying to avoid having to, to do that rework, or? Yeah, basically it's, so when, when we talk about front-end, front-end people probably know that if you change the markup behind your CSS, it's, like everything breaks because of, you can't really see what, what things broke un, except visually. And that's all of the quality control you can do. Okay. There are BC breaks in Drupal 9. I, I, I guess I still don't understand why for something that could be many, many years in the future, you'd avoid, because for, so, so my non-themer, non-designer <coughs> perspective is that if we want the out-of-the-box initiative to show people best practices around how to build a Drupal site. We want the, it to, to be a showcase of how you would actually build a site. And we recommend that people start from either classy or stable in Drupal 8. So why wouldn't we, why wouldn't we do that for this initiative? Well, those are exactly the, yeah, those are good arguments why we should do it on classy and stable. On the other hand, if we want this to be supported for longer than what Drupal 8 is, what I... Right, like Drupal 9 could be five years from now or never, right? Like, like yeah. when we can add new features in a minor release, there isn't a... Um, yeah. And we don't actually, this, like this massive BC break that we're talking about, it, like that wouldn't even happen, have to happen in, in Drupal 9. I, I'm, I'm still not understanding where this is, this is the issue, so you guys need to do it. But that's exactly the purpose of stable, that it will be removed in Drupal 9. And so was it like replaced with a new, the, for the, the... Yes, with the new oh, markup, yes. I gotcha. Okay, so it's, it's yeah. not like, it, it's that, that the, the theme. theme is rewritten to match the module markup at the time. Yeah. Okay. See, I, I think, yeah, my opinion is that, is that I, I wouldn't make a decision now based on something that's a hypothetical problem years in the future, and, and if it, especially if it slows down work on the initiative and might also demonstrate to people something that's not the best practice that we recommend when they build the sites. On the other hand, I wouldn't like to block the Drupal 9 release on something like not having any shippable teams in Drupal core. Uh, so. I had, a sim <laughs> I had a similar question, like um, it doesn't matter if it's years from now, like maybe you'll, want, you'll have different best practices um, that you'll want to update it for anyway. Um, does it even need to be the case that the Umami demo site or initial demo theme is something that needs to be 
supported over 10 years or so. I, I'm not sure if it's like, I think it's wonderful that you're thinking so much about BC, but maybe it's, uh, it's limiting yourself too much. Like, yeah, I personally don't really, uh, like if we are fine with that, I'm, I'm fine with that. I just would like to make a decision where everyone understands what it means. It's not really other than that, anything other than that for me. Yeah, we don't have a strong opinion on that. Yeah. That. It also feels like, let's assume we would pay, uh, or you, we, uh, would base upon, uh, like, I was thinking core, like instead of classy and stable, I think the additional work we would have to do in the future, it's basically just moved into the now, I guess. And like, we can also just do the work in the future instead of now, and we get something nice out of it. Uh, earlier. Uh, the other question is have, where's the future of standard? The, the use case of minimal is like, like you don't have anything, you start from scratch. Um, is there a future for standard or will, will it just stay the same or do you have any idea about that? I don't think I have any idea of, about that. <laughs> uh, I think standard is just someone else's opinion about how the uh, experience should be when you install Drupal and it could be potentially be moved in some of the future uh, major releases. Uh, but I don't think there's anything that we really necessarily want to do in Drupal 8 for that. Um, coming from Drupal 7 teaming, and the last couple of years now with Drupal 8 teaming, I've got very used to the kind of default classes that come out of Drupal. And I think pretty much anyone else that would be doing teaming would be expecting dot field, dot field type, dot field name, and things as, as classes, and the same with regions and nodes and that. Uh, and I think basing on classy for that reason would help us have more people working on it and not have to be wondering what class we're going to decide to add ourselves. Uh, and any work I've done so far on the style guide is all based on the classes that are output by classy. But that's not a huge, let's say if we decide not to use classy, we've got backwards compatibility break with the style guide at the moment, but <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll fix that in two hours or thereabouts. Uh, so I wouldn't let that hold us up. But for, for that kind of a reason, I think I, uh, my preference would be to say we go with Classy and we do what the contemporary best practice for Drupal is and, and show it in that way. Okay, so it seems like there is no one who is against using Classy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we, I'm not a front-end developer, but I'm pretty sure we only ever use Stable as our base theme. So, and we're doing style guide driven development, that kind of thing. Yeah. I don't think the... Uh, base team will limit the way you do your front end, the way you write your CSS. The only thing it really affects is the, the backwards compatibility. That's really the only thing that we, in, in this context that we have to care about. Because like basically everything we get out of Classy we could get even if we go just extend core. Because Classy is not allowed to change. So we could technically copy all of the templates from Classy as a starting point. Okay, so no one else is against this, so I guess we can move to the next question. Uh, so in Drupal core at the moment, we don't have tools for building component-based teams. Um, are we fine with the fact that the team will not be component-based? Are we okay with that? Like, is that something we can agree as a community that we don't have these tools in core? We are not proposing them as part of the initiative uh, to be added in core, can we then make it as a non-component-based team? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was one of the people working a lot on the component-based stuff a year ago. I think it makes sense. Like, you shouldn't expand your scope to something enormous with tackling lots of very, very difficult problems while doing something very tangible and useful for a big uh, part of the community. So I would say go, for, go with whatever is the smallest in scope and the most uh, uh, sensible, impactful. Yeah, the interesting thing actually about this is most of the front-end developers are f only familiar with component-based teaming. That is kind of like, can any, any of us unlearn doing component-based teaming and build this? Like, how are we supposed to do that? <laughs> Maybe we need, we need to hire some back-end developers writing the, the team. <laughs> okay. In, in what sense is it not component-based? Because Again, it's only from the work I've been doing the last few weeks on, on the style guide. Um, I've got a directory called style guide. Yeah. I've got a directory that called components. And each view mode is an individual item, 
component in that with its own JavaScript, with its own CSS, with its own uh, uh, template file. Uh, and the same for the regions, and the same for the page layout, and the same for columns and sidebars and all that kind of stuff. Um, the only problem I do have with it at the moment is that index.php or anything.php is disallowed to be accessed because of the HT access rules. Um, but we do have all those being developed, let's say, as components. And then for the Drupal team to work, what I've done is I created a library from every single component and then add those as a global item in the .info file if we want it globally, like say the header and footer and things like that. And then each individual component gets added via its own Twig file. Yeah, so we don't have most of the, we don't have any of the tools from components module in, in Drupal core. So we don't have any additional namespaces. We only have the templates namespace. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I'm not sure that we need the components module then. I guess the, the one problem we do have is that we're not using a twig file, let's say, within the style guide. We're, we're just using an index.php file. So we, we got a duplication of code then to make sure that the, the node hyphen hyphen teaser template matches the output that, we, that that's, that's in the index.php inside the, the node component, let's call it. But we, we, we don't have the node hyphen hyphen teaser saying that it extends from a different area. But we still have each individual component can be built on its own and viewed on its own and then merged into lists for views and things like that. Yeah, I think I get what you're proposing. So it's basically you're proposing a workaround of, of the limitations of, of Drupal. Yeah, that we, we'd be rendering each thing with PHP rather than with Twig and then we, we merge the HTML that, gets, that we want to see, let's say. Basically, the HTML I'm writing, let's say, in, in the style guide is what Drupal is outputting at the moment based on Classy. And that's basically the same that we're going to get from the default templates. So one or two have to change if we need an extra class in it. Um, okay, so. But it looks like to me that we, we, we have a component-based theme. We just don't have components module to, to, to fulfill it with Twig. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, I think what Mark is describing is basically using the infrastructure that Drupal 8 does provide as well as possible to do components like things, yes. but not have everything as beautifully and elegantly and architecturally componentized as it would in an ideal system. So it seems like a pragmatic approach to have some component aspects, but maybe not as, as great as it otherwise would be. Yeah. So it seems, yeah, it seems very pragmatic and sensible. Yeah. I, uh, I, I don't know enough about the component stuff to know if this is the right approach or not, but I do want to make sure that we're thinking about um, Whatever we build and we put in Drupal core is what other people are going to look at as like, this is the way that we should do it. And so you shouldn't, even if you could hack around the way that Drupal 8 does something, we should be really cautious when we do that. Because as soon as we do, it's going to become the new standard for how people build themes. And for better or worse, like people do what Bardic does already because it's the first thing that they have and they can copy and paste it. And so we need to be aware of that. Yeah, that's a very good, good point. Yeah, I, on, on that note, I was also, um, I was nodding along until I heard the part about multiple index.phps and then I became terrified and my heart skipped a beat. Um, so let's please not put anything that does that in core. Um, just the, setting a, a ground rule right now for that. But, um, <laughs> if, but if, if the design is, if there's a way to um, build the theme in a way that it's like future compatible to, so that it could be converted to an actual componentized theme when core has support for that, then that, that would be beautiful, I think. Yeah, so I think, do you have still? Yeah, so it sounds like we, what we actually want is we, so we want to find approach that is as component based as possible without hacking around, uh, trying to get the benefits out of component based teaming, but by not taking the cost of making people hack around this. How much slower would that be than thousands lines of ugly CSS? Will it slow us down? Will it slow us down? I think on the implementation part, it's it doesn't have a drastic impact to one way or another to make it slower or faster. The, the problem is that once we start finding bugs and once we start one, once we have to maintain what we've built, then it's going to be drastically easier to, to maintain it once it's component-based. 
So that's the benefit we get. But on the implementation part, there shouldn't be a big difference to, to one way or another. I'll remember that. <laughs> no, yes, please. Is the issue then that, okay, so we, what, what I'm doing with index.php files at the moment is, like we said, it's a programmatic thing, it gets us, it allows us to at least see some sort of a rendered page so we can start writing HTML or CSS and JavaScript. So we take out all those index.php files because we don't want that stuff in. Can we do that with Twig then instead? And if we can do that with Twig, I don't see a problem then with extending from a node template, a node template from a, a component template, let's call it. Because it's, it's not outside the, 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 the directory root of the team itself. So we, we, we got, say, two, 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 two directories, one called templates, one called uh, style guide. We're just going to tell the templates to, you know, we say at include directory tilde whatever it is. If, if we can get my index.php files to be index.html.twig or something instead. We possibly could, but we don't have the namespace in, in core. So we will have to, again, kind of hack around the limitations. Because they, the namespaces come from the components module for the uh, Twig templates, allowing to include without uh, path. But why, I mean, includes are relative to the current direction. Yes, so you... So why can't we... I mean, yes, you can. And then like use the attach to like add the CSS and JavaScript and that's it. But I think that's what he's doing. Yeah, right. Yeah. But don't get the discussion about the index PHP things. I think he I think he's generating a overview of all the different Twig templates uh, with an index of PHP file. And there's an in individual index of PHP file for every single Twig template so that you can view them all. That's how I understand it. But I'm not I think nobody is is exactly certain how you've done what you've done. <laughs> I think that's part of the confusion. Yeah. So I think I think it's an unnecessary implementation detail that we're yeah. discussing here. I think the whole point is do we want to uh, embed the work of making Drupal better at supporting component-based teaming in this initiative? I think the answer to that is no. I think that's enough for this conversation. Yeah, so, so the Mark's approach is not actually to do anything with the components itself, but it's to do exactly what Wim say, to uh, allow rendering a style guide, to allow rendering a uh, single uh, tweak templates. Yeah. yeah, so that's why he was talking about the index files. So that's another problem that we have. <laughs> uh, so um, another thing that we've been thinking about is that what is the difference between the core pro provided distributions or installation profiles and the contributed distributions? And like, how could we promote the contributed uh, installation profiles further? Because we, it would make sense to uh, promote the contenta uh, inside uh, inside the out-of-the-box initiative somehow, maybe as part of, a part of the installer, maybe inside the, the site itself. I don't know, they are very related. They are something that different user groups are interested in, but if we promote this use case, doesn't it make sense to also promote the an, another use case because it, I would see it as almost as common. It, is there something that we would like to do to promote the uh, related installation profiles and what is the difference between these? So I have a um, related question, basically. Um, as Drupal was, um, Dries was talking today about Drupal moving away from blog and static sites and this kind of uh, smaller examples to more complex things. Are you planning also to showcase the work that other initiatives are doing, like layout, uh, media, workflows, and these kind of things? Um, yes, actually the plan is that we would like to extend the, uh, the demo from just from like node module, block module, to, to the more advanced use cases. But I think we need more experiences from like how building demos works for us. Like what kind of different tools do we have to build these demos? Because it's like, if you just install workflows, it's not enough to really give a demo out of workflows. So we, we need a better way to build demos than just like installing the module. So, uh, so for node module, it is creating default content. For blocks, it's like creating default blocks. It's, it's simple, and that's what we've got figured out now. But for workflows and other things, like the more advanced use cases, we have to figure out another way to, to, to demonstrate them. And uh, we, we don't have a solution for that yet, but we, we have discussed about it as part of the, this initiative, and it is on the future roadmap once we've got the first bits figured out. And um, I think it's very important uh, that we, we 
they'll be able to build demo of those as well. Work together. Yeah. yeah. So for this question, um, I, I two things. Uh, first, I think it's a very important question, but it feels again uh, like you're expanding scope to a very big problem space. Maybe it's a separate initiative of, of its own, the discoverability of distributions. Um, so I would personally say be pragmatic again and don't st start tackling this problem. However, uh, I, do, I do see your point about Contenta being related and so on. would be great if it could be surfaced, but for Contenta in particular and actually most distributions, to be able to surface it in the regular installer, you would have to have the ability to download additional code, which is an unsolved problem. If we had that, we could do automatic updates to some degree as well. So it's a can of worms that I would yeah. say, let's not start tackling that as part of out of the box. But I, yeah, by promoting them on installer, it doesn't necessarily mean that it would have to be a download. It could be something else as well. Described it sounded to me like in the installer you get standard minimal uh, and out of the box or umami, uh, and then there's also contenta, and so you click contenta radio and then it starts downloading. That's why, but maybe. Yeah, I that's, I think that's the <laughs> obvious way, but I think there is simpler ways to solve it. Like it could be just a link to the distribution as well. Like we have, these are the ones that we ship with, these are the ones that you can download. Like if you're interested about OpenHUM, go to this link. If you're interested about contenta, go to this link. And, uh, and you feel that that's related to... So, so the reason why this is related is because of a lot of people are asking why are we focusing on this one thing, is that we actually... So it's about the out-of-the-box experience, and we are solving it for one... Uh, what, these user personas that we have. Yeah. But to solve it fully in the, uh, in the long run, we need to be able to promote... Uh, we, we need to be able to make other demos than what we are building at the moment. and. Uh, to make it, maybe make it faster at this point to, to kind of, because of, it's really slow to build these demos in Drupal core. There would be a faster way around it if we could just promote the examples that we already have out there, even if they are not necessarily on the grade that they could be included in Drupal core uh, automatically. Yeah, that's, that's the same example with the, with the default content. I mean, we didn't create the default content uh, architecture com and how to build everything. They built it and we are going to use it. So for example, if we work together with, with the installation profile, that it's something that it's also part from this, from, of this initiative, working together we will figure out different ca uses cases and so on. Um, yeah, I, I think you should really not focus on that as well. Um, it's just so much of a problem. Um, like. Many distributions like currently don't really host on Drupal.org, for example, because they don't have composer support or they will come. So I really want to invite people to um, go to the meeting, the uh, conversation at five tomorrow about installation profiles where the, all those problems are talked about. And I think that is probably something which will happen in parallel mm -hmm. and you should not. In this argue. very room. Yeah, mm -hmm. it seems so. Yeah. Um, um, what else do you want? I think the solution to like link it from the installer is amazing, but how do you like select which things you want to promote? Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah I'm, another version of let's uh, start pragmatic. This is the one case we defined so that we may learn how we can do this. It's the first demo we make to find out how we should, how we, uh, what we need to make it a repeatable process. Yeah. So this is a special case, but uh, with a focused goal, right? Which is a strategic goal. So it answers, uh, um, it provides value in its special case. And let's use the special case to find out what we need uh, for a generalized approach. Yeah. But keep track of that. Don't make it a topic in. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, sort of the piggyback on that. I think also <laughs> once, like, I feel like very few people, as far as people who use Drupal, actually know about what you guys are doing. But obviously, like, once it's released, it's like all of a sudden tons of people will know about it, and maybe also more people would be willing to work on it because obviously it's promoted if it's right there on the Drupal installation page and you can do it. So some of the more ambitious stuff could maybe do round two because now. Everybody knows there's an out-of-box experience that's different from standard. 
where it's like it's really hard to get that message across until it's in every every single person who downloads Drupal has this experience, and I feel like that'll be a game changer. I don't want to open the can of worms, but um, um, it kind of feels like um, to keep it in context, you could add like banner space down the sides of your theme. I mean, I haven't, I haven't looked at the theme in detail, so I can't see if you've got the real estate there. But you could have rotating banner images that essentially link off to the kind of distribution pages, module pages, and you can have interlinking things that are actually in context, but it kind of feels like it might be a solution to that. Yeah, so we have a about Umami page, actually, on the designs, uh, where we will explain something about this team. We haven't decided yet. But I don't know. Maybe that's the place where we could uh, promote other examples, other demos. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to quickly touch on your point. So I'm relatively new to Drupal. I've only been working it for, like, six months. Um, and I think, like, having it in that sort of option where you can you know, just install it straight away would be really beneficial because from my perspective, when I started six months ago, first going to Drupal, like the base theme, and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> just like full stop, like no idea. So it, it wasn't until I worked on, you know, five, six sites where I was like, oh, okay, I understand content types, views, blah, 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 you know, and you start to get the bigger picture. But right now, I don't think it's going to be that helpful if we don't give beginners like myself you know, some clear indication of this is a good example of what you can do. Now go back and do your own thing. I think we are running out of time. I'm pretty sure uh, someone's going to kick me out of the stage soon. So uh, uh, we have plenty of questions uh, left that we would like to discuss with you. So, uh, so um, here's the details of the, of the buff room. See you there. Thank you. <laughs>